Hello photography friends and welcome to part one of the documentation of my recent trip to the Scottish Highlands. Throughout this incredible week-long journey I experienced the best the Highlands has to offer with everything from rolling hills, beautiful beaches and stunning mountain views all while capturing some of my best work yet in landscape photography. So join me on my adventure across the Scottish Highlands as I tackle midges, adverse weather conditions and long drives to capture the spectacular views of Scotland. Let's get into it. Don't let your worries weigh you down, down, down. You can still take Though you're earthbound The journey started with a lengthy drive all the way from Manchester to our first stop of the trip in Forest. The day started with some particularly miserable weather, as is typical of the northwest of England, and a quick stop in Penrith to check out the castle was cut short by some heavy rainfall. Though I didn't get any shots on my A7 III here, I did take some shots on film, which I'll be covering over on my second channel where I post any film photography related content. Thankfully, as we crossed the border into Scotland, the rain began to clear up, allowing me to appreciate some views other than just a rain-soaked windscreen. And with only a half an hour delay in standstill traffic around Glasgow, and one or two coffee and petrol stops, we reached our destination in the early evening after about seven hours of driving. The first stop on the trip was a quaint little campsite just east of Forres called The Loft, where we'd be camping for the first three nights. After pitching up the tent and meeting up with my parents who had already been there for a few days, I took the first few shots of the trip as the evening provided a lovely golden hour over the golden wheat fields surrounding the campsite. Golden Hour turned to sunset and we ended the first day with some hard earned beers. The plan for the first full day of the trip was to have a beach day with my family, so we headed to Nairn Beach. After spending a few hours entertaining my niece and nephew, I was pretty exhausted but I still took the opportunity to get some photography in. Here I took the first few long exposures of the trip, and this is a good time to mention I was using a variable ND filter over my 50mm lens for any long exposures, due to how bright and sunny it was. The seaweed covered rocks surrounded by rock pools made for some great compositions, using the still water of the rock pools with the seaweed reflecting in them against a background of the much less calm ocean and cliffs rising in the distance. Like stone, the motionless in this world of stories. Oh, like stone, I'll be here forever, waiting for your call. Lovers come, lovers go, and their hearts seem to 
change But mine is still the same Cause I still love them all And my heart is not to blame It's just the way it is After making our way back to the campsite, I was eager to get out for some more photography and decided to find a good spot to shoot a moody sunset, just a short walk from the campsite. I'm pretty sure Winston appreciated the extra walk too, but not as much as I'd appreciate settling down for the night ahead of another busy day. The first stop on day two was Corbin Forest, just a short drive away from the campsite. I discovered there was a viewpoint in the forest called Hill 99, named as such after its height and feet, and was eager to get some shots from the top of it. The walk, which should have only taken around 25 minutes, took almost an hour, with two children, five dogs and one photographer all getting distracted for various reasons. We finally reached Hill 99, and as expected, the views over the vast forest did not disappoint. What was disappointing, however, was the lack of good light with the sun being hidden away while we were atop the viewpoint, and whereas I would normally wait around, this was still the family holiday part of the trip, and we were on a schedule, so we pushed on. The next stop was Brodie Castle, which is a Scottish National Trust site, and as we knew we'd be visiting a couple more of these, we signed up for the membership for entry, which was fairly cheap at £5.50 for a month, and would end up being well worth it by the end of the week. Sadly, the castle itself was only open for guided tours, all of which were full on the day. I did, however, get a few shots from the exterior.
Eager to get stuck into some proper photography after two days of family activities, we split off from my family for the evening and headed to Findhorn Bay. It's not often I opt for black and white edits in my photography, but due to the sickly yellow colour of the seaweed at Findhorn Bay, it seemed the best option in some of the edits, as I was finding the colour edits to be somewhat unappealing. After a relaxing stroll to the beach and some delicious food from the captain's table, a local restaurant, we grabbed a couple of coffees and waited on the beach for sunset. While waiting for sunset we were pleasantly surprised by a phenomenal golden hour, during which I set up my tripod in the sand dunes and began to shoot some of my favourite images of the journey so far. Golden hour turned to a fiery sunset and I sat up on the beach shooting until the last of the sunlight faded.
following day would mark the end of the family holiday section of the trip. We said our goodbyes and headed west towards Inverness and our hotel for the night in Drumna Drocket. But first, we had a few stops to make on the way. Culloden Battlefield was a site I'd wanted to visit from the start of the trip. Being another National Trust site, we made use of our memberships once again. We also picked up a really useful guide to the battlefield, which I used the front cover of as inspiration for some of my edits, opting for a moody look to match the sombre feeling of the battlefield. This incredible site is a must visit if you're traveling in the Highlands and I was fascinated to learn how important the battle was in the history of both Scotland and the rest of Britain. I also learned that although it wasn't filmed at the site of the battlefield, there is a part of the TV show Outlander that took place at the Battle of Culloden. Although it's not a TV show of much myself, this might be something that interests you if you go and visit. to Loch Ness we made a short stop in Inverness for some food and though we were only there around an hour or so I still took the time to get a few shots of the city. Inverness and reached Loch Ness, we were once again treated to some stunning views as we drove along the A82 towards Drumna Drocken, where we'd be staying for the night. The road is filled with spots to park up every few hundred metres, and I decided to pull over at one with a small path leading down to the lock.
relaxing spot was perfect to capture a few long exposures of the lock. And in my own photography version of look at this cool rock I found, I used a particularly large rock sitting in the water as a focal point for many of the shots. We reached the small village of Drumna Drocket in the early evening, and after settling in at the hotel, decided to head out for a walk towards Urquhart Castle. The castle was a spot I'd wanted to visit, and having Winston with us, we unfortunately wouldn't be able to go in due to dogs not being allowed inside. However, with a little bit of research on Google Maps, I found a spot about a half hour walk away where it seemed there may be a good viewpoint for the castle. It's also worth noting that just like Culloden, the castle appeared in the TV show Outlander. short walk up provided some incredible views of the lock, and as we reached the peak, the castle finally came into view, and the partially sun-soaked forest on the opposite side made for a perfect backdrop to this stunning location.
just three days, I'd barely scratched the surface of what the Highlands had to offer, but was left in awe of this stunning part of the world. The next step of the journey would take me towards the towering peaks of Ben Nevis and the end goal of the journey, a location that you're sure to find on the bucket list of every photographer, the mountains of Glencoe.